All right, guys, today we're looking at a game called Forgotten Waters from Plathead Games. And this one actually went through my went and flew right through my radar because I didn't actually hear about this game and all the press it was getting beforehand. I actually was just randomly on Facebook and saw an ad from Plathead Games saying, hey, Forgotten Waters is now available on our website, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, I like Plathead Games. I love Dead of Winter that's behind me, one of my favorite games. And it's a crosswords game which is the implementation that Dead of Winter did where you're giving choices uh, based on the actions that you're taking in the game. And I was like, oh, I definitely got to look into this. Went on their website, read about it, did some digging, and it was instantly a game that I had to try for myself to see if it was any good. And it's a pirate adventure game, and it's scenario-based. It has an app that you use, uh, which is a web-based app that you actually go through and play through these stories. It has all voiceover work that you actually listen to the story, and it's being told through an actual narrator. And everything was hitting all its marks, but... Me and my wife played through it. We played through the first couple of scenarios, and we have some thoughts about it. So let's go ahead and get into it. Gaming tech, eating brekkie is the gaming tech. Going for a brekkie is the gaming tech. Gaming techie is the gaming tech. Gaming techie. All right, guys. So here's an overview a little bit of what Forgotten Waters is all about. So this is a really cool game. I just played this with my wife. We played the first scenario. And what's cool is that actually the scenario is actually broken up, broken up into two parts. So it's about an hour and a half for each part. There's five scenarios included in the game. The, um, you know, they did say that they were going to try and depending on how well the game sells, of course, that they were going to try to make more scenarios for the game. But each scenario is really, really detailed. Like I said, each it's broken up into two parts, an hour and a half for each section. And it's full. The, the reason that sets this game apart between other games is that the dialogue in this game is just outstanding uh, with the way that they, you know, the voiceover work and how they sound and, and the voice acting in the game is just really, really, really good. And there's an app, of course, that you use with the game. And the app is right here. I have it sitting on the iPad. And what's cool about the app is that it actually you'll never worry about like it having iOS compatibility. Like, you know, if iOS updates to version 15 and the app doesn't and it breaks compatibility, then you're kind of stuck in a situation where you're kind of screwed. In this case, it's actually just a web app. You actually just go to F, uh, fwcrossroads.com and this is the app right here. And you literally have, uh, you can install it for offline use even if you have no internet connectivity. Look at some options. You have the extra ship and player sheets. Look at some variants because you can play this game with two players even though the box says it's for three to seven people. There's a variant to play solo or with two players. And then you hit the play now button. And like I said, here are these scenarios that are in here right now. And scenario one, which is the one we played, uh, kind of looks like this. And this is where you kind of start. The way that this game breaks down is you're obviously a pirate. You're going on a pirate adventure. Like I said, it's up to seven people. Uh, you can play with three, four, five, six, or seven. There is a two-player variant and a one-player variant. And this is the components on the board. So this is the layout of the ocean. That is your ship there in the corner. Or in the corner. And this is the scenario setup on how it actually sets up your board when you're playing the first scenario that I just showed you. This is exactly how you were to set it up with these tokens. Um, and this is, of course, the Forgotten Waters location book on the locations you're going to be traveling to. Before we get to the actual locations, let's talk a little bit about the pirates in the game. So each person is going to get one of these sheets here. And this is each person gets one of these. And you can see here, this is the um, constellation track. This is the name that I decided to make for my first one. And these are the skills that I have. And as you're going through the game, you obviously select more and more skills that you check off. Now, the constellation track is really important in the game because this is actually how you win the game. So you win as a group. Technically, you have to beat the scenario. You can lose altogether as pirates. But when the game actually ends and you get to the end, each pirate is based is you know, you win based on how many constellation points you actually have. So as you're going through the game, you get constellation points and you're crossing off these little circles. And every time you get to an exclamation point like you do here, you gain one of the exclamation points on there. And when the app tells you to claim those exclamation uh, points, that is how you actually claim your actual points. And you would turn the book here and you need to get at least four of these to actually win the game. You can see every time you gain an exclamation token, you can see here that you read the little section of the story you make. And then at the end of the game, you get either a bad ending, a good ending, or a legendary ending, depending on how many of those exclamation points you actually gathered. And like I said, you gain those exclamation points. You start off in the center with that star. And every time you have to fill in one of these constellation points based on the tokens you're gaining throughout the game, you fill in one circle. And you go. You can only fill in the ones that are adjacent to your starting location. So if you fill this one, the next turn I can fill either the one right next to it or the one next to the starting one. And then you get the exclamation point as you go. So you would fill this whole one and you get an exclamation. Then you come back over here, you fill this whole one. Come over here, fill this one. And come over here and fill this long track over here. So like I said, you need at least four to actually be able to win the game. 
Um, if you don't have at least four, then you're going to gain get a really bad ending, and you're not going to actually win the game. So, but I like I said, you do win as a crew. You can lose this game together. You don't lose it separately. There's no player elimination or anything like that. You win as a crew, but you need to have a certain amount of infamy at the end, a certain amount of consolation points to show your true worth as a pirate on the seas. Um, so, like I said, each player has one of these. Uh, they keep track of their points. Are this is how they keep track of their skills. Um, and stuff like that. This is their mini pirate story that the game starts with and stuff like that. So really cool stuff. And this is how that, what they read at the end. So each player gains one of those. Now, what you do also is there are seven different things that players are also keeping track of throughout the game. The more players you have, the more you can even evenly distribute that game, the, the parts of the game. So for example, um, the, if you look over here, these are four different tracks in the game. So over here you have the lookout, the quartermaster, the gunners, and the first mate. So you can separate those into four different people, but if you're doing a two-player game like I did when I played this with my wife, since we're all in quarantine and don't really have people coming over our house right now, uh, we play this as a two-player game, so I was handling these four. And basically what these four are, the gunners are obviously handling the cannons, so you're readying and putting these loaded or unloaded, and you're handling that. So when the game tells you to load a cannon, you're the one handling that. The infamy track is how you actually gain the constellation points, and it also determines who goes first in a round. So you're moving your token of the chosen player around, so you're handling that, handling it for all players. The lookout is handling the current objective in the game, and also will also handle the uh, threat track. Having too much threat in the game could also cause you to lose the game. And then, of course, you also have the um, first mate track as well. And the first mate, you're handling the discontent of the crew members on board in relation to how many crew members are actually on board if either of these ever go together and combine or right on top of each other then you also lose the game that way another track that you're ha another track that you're handling in the game is the cooper track which is basically the supplies on board for the crew when they have to be fed and stuff like that you're going to be handling that when the game talks about uh the that track and the other track on the game is called the hull track which is basically your ship status so if you ever get to zero that means your ship basically sunk and you lose the game immediately there as well um, so that's another thing that player that that player is going to be keeping track of. And the last thing that somebody else is going to be is going to be handling the ship log. And the ship log is going to have the ship's name, the scenario. You're sometimes going to be asked to write certain things on here based on the story you're playing. Uh, this is the threat track that we were talking about before. Every time you reach a certain amount of threat and the game tells you to check for threat, you're going to have to fill one of these out and read the entry. If you ever read the last entry, that means you basically lose because you've gotten too much threat. Sometimes you're going to be asked to do captain quarters or captain missions, and they're going to be keeping track of the logs here with this. So they're basically keeping track of all the logs in the game. You're also on this threat track going to be keeping track of the current objective that I talked about. Like the current objective when you first start this is to decipher the map. So the goal is to reach the principal islands. So that's going to be your current track. And principal island is the 963 that's sitting right here. So basically when you start the game, your objective is to get that ship that you start with, which is your ship, and get to 963 to decipher the map that's currently sitting right here. So that's our current objective when you start the game. Everyone, of course, has a uh, an actual character that they're going to be and they're going to play. They grab their dice. Uh, these are treasure cards that you're going to start. The, you'll start with one treasure card in the game and also the little ability card that you start with. You can see here on the corner, if you pre-order this game you and get it directly from their website, that they're giving away a little um, placement holder for these, icon, for these things, which are cool. The yellow one here are the treasures that you gain. Uh, this token here is a reroll token, which basically lets you reroll dice when you do skill checks. This one here is a negative effect, the bird, which basically when you roll dice, it makes you take the makes you roll two dice when you're rolling just one, and you have to take the lower value. It's basically just a negative effect. These are the consolation tokens I was talking about, and these are story cards that this game will sometimes tell you to take. And basically, the way that the game works, I don't want to spoil the game, so it makes it hard to show this game completely. But basically, when you hit the play now on the actual app here. Uh, you hit the play now, it goes through a little introductory story of how that game actually works, and, and everything is voiced over, and then it basically tells you to turn to a certain page in the book. So if, as an example, I'll show you one page, and this will say open at sea. And you can see here, basically what happens is, is you open the book to the page, and then you hit the timer app on the actual app, and everybody has 40 seconds around the table to take their piece and go to one of these locations. And all of the players have to be placed in those 40 seconds. So if there's seven players playing, all seven characters have to be placed on there because if you don't, then you lose discontent on that track I was talking about before where the crew members get discontent on board. So everyone frantically talks about it and they're talking about each other's. You place your characters on wherever you want to go. 
Um, and the way that, since you only have 40 seconds, when you're placing your characters, you obviously don't have time to read this side of the board. This is the actions that you're actually going to do, but you do that afterwards in the actions phase. Right now, all you're looking at is on this, and you're looking at basically a couple of things. So the symbols on here, if they're red like that, that means that you have to go here. One of the players have to put their pieces there, so there has to be at least one player there that takes that action. The blue spaces mean there's only one person that can actually take this action. Over here, as many players as they want can come here. So that's basically what those symbols mean. And then you're looking at the title. So here it says sail. Here you're doing the captain quarters. Here you're going to be talking to the crew. You're going to be editing your cannon. So based on those descriptions, you're going to be deciding if you want to go there in a fast 40 second round. And also each symbol on the bottom. So if they're white symboled, that means that you're going to gain that skill and you're going to do it and you're not going to have to do an actual check. And then you're looking at the actual symbols, of course, underneath. And if they're white like this, that means you may gain a navig you're going to gain a navigation skill, which is part of your skills that you're trying to gain up. But you may you have to do a skill check if they're white. That's basically what that's letting you know. If they're black, like this one, where the, you have these black symbols, like a cannon symbol or the barrel symbol, that means you might gain that skill, but you're not going to have to do a skill check to get it. Like this fish hunting one, again, means that you're going to possibly gain that skill by going to this location, but you're going to actually do a skill check to be able to actually gain it. So based on those symbols and that commonology on here, um, by it depends on in your head where you think you should go. So everyone places their picture, their their figures on there. They're frantically placing them wherever they want. There's going to be seven characters on here. You're placing them around the board. Once those forty seconds are up, if you didn't, if you didn't, if you did that in forty seconds, you're good to go. If you didn't do it in forty seconds, you lower the track here for the first mate, and you move this discontent track up one for not doing it fast enough, basically. And then the action phase happens, and the action phase is in infamy order. So whoever's highest on the infamy track that we showed before, they basically go in order from one to... T so everyone who did one, they go in order. Everyone who's on two goes in order. And you go in the order of infamy. So if there's two player, if there's three players or two players sitting on this track here, you go in infamy track order. And the person who's first on the infamy track takes this action first. You read what's on the side here. You do what it says. And you take that action. And then the next player does it, so forth and so forth, until all the actions have been taken. And then you do the round end and says read entry 800. You put it into the app. You let the app narrate what the next story beat is. And then you go forward and, and do that. And obviously your objective, like I said, is to get that ship to that destination. But you have to be managing all these things while you're going to that destination. So you don't. You want to make sure your hull doesn't take a lot of damage because if you get to zero, you lose. You want to make sure your, your, your people are happy on board and they're not too discontent with you. Uh, you need to be managing your threat. And all these things are happening as you're progressing the story and as you're doing these different actions over here on the board. And the game, as you progress the story, will, of course, tell you, all right, uh, there's a bunch of pages on here. It will tell you to go to different pages. There's about, a, is it 180 pages on here? 79 pages that you can go to. And you're obviously not going to go through all of them. You're even not going to do every action on the board sometimes because you may not take all those actions. You may not do everything on here. So that makes it really replayable when you do the same mission because, sure, the scenario that you're doing is always got to have the same beginning, the same middle, and the same end, of course. So the scenario is always going to start the same way. You're always going to have to reach this island as your first objective, but you're going to get there in different ways. You may see different stories develop based on what you're doing and what you click on because some of them will direct you to read certain stories based on what your die roll is. So obviously you're not going to get the same die roll every time. So you're going to get to these places in different ways, which makes the scenarios much more replayable and makes them much more interesting to listen to because you're going to get different story beats along the same path. Um, so you're going through there, you're following the narrative story, and, and you're doing what the scenario asks by taking those actions, uh, going to different pages, and, and doing different things based on what the crew is actually telling you to do. And, you know, you're trying to reach the scenario end. And what's really cool about this game, if you guys are familiar with games like Dead of Winter, which is what this game is basically based off of, except this is a pirate theme, is that there's different crossroad events that happen throughout the game. A crossroad event can be of many different things. Obviously, I haven't seen all of them, but basically you're given an event that the group must talk about and decide what to do. It could be, hey, the crew is going hungry, uh, as simple as the crew is going hungry, and should we feed them or should we not? If you'd feed them, you know, your morale goes up, but then the the, the items on board go down. Uh, if you don't feed them, the discontent goes up, blah, blah, blah. And you have to decide as a group which one you're going to do. And the breaker of ties is always going to be the person highest on the infamy track, which so that's the infamy track is a big deal. And that's what makes the game interesting because the dynamic between the players and the crew, you're, even though you're trying to get your goal accomplished, which is getting those four constellation points, you can't get that accomplished unless if you're all working together because you need to get to the end of the scenario. You need to progress the scenario. You need to manage all these things on ship while also keeping in the back of your mind that you need to get your fulfillment as well and be the best pirate on the ship.
So, of course, there could be multiple winners at the end of the game. If everyone, if multiple players hit four constellation tokens, then obviously there's multiple winners. There could be one, there could be two, there could be three, there could be none. It depends how the scenario actually plays out. But like I said, what really makes this game fun is two things for me. What makes it really stand out is the actual talking of the game, the 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 introduction of the game, and the narration of the game is top notch. Uh, you can choose not to do that and just read the story yourself, but I don't know why you would do that. Um, and then you can also, and then the other part of it is the um, cooperation in the game that the game lends to with those crossroad events and things that you're discussing throughout the game when you're discussing what you should or should not do. Uh, really bring some really cool story beats and some really cool and hard decisions that you may have to make. Uh, why you're taking this game uh, and into those crossword events. So the crossword events on here is really, really cool. It's all handled by the app. So uh, that is an overview of basically what you're doing in the game and how everything plays out. Uh, of course, there's a couple of things I'm leaving out as far as integrate details with the different dials and stuff, but that's a good overview of what you actually should be doing. And what I want to do also is give you a quick scenario of what the app actually sounds like. So if I were to click on here, and I just randomly put in a number here just to, so you guys can hear it. If you read this, you'll get this little pop-up. This is me randomly picking one, and I just hit play. The flag on the merchant ship bears the royal crest with a large bumblebee emblazoned over it. The bumblebee delivery service. Easy pickings, me hearties. <laughs> Laughs the captain. Place your bets now on what they're hauling. Is it dry goods, chests of coin, or maybe beautiful barrels of rum? So the narrator reads the story. You can see how good the actual narration sounds. I was just a short story. I picked that out of random. So you guys don't know what this is coming from. And then it tells you at the end what you need to do. So here it says, remove the navigation token to from the game and flip a cannon to an unloaded side. So the person who's managing the cannons would flip one of the sides to unloaded. Um, and then it says, if you can't do that, then you would actually lose hull, which is the ship strength that we were talking about earlier. And then it says to set dial A to, sh to number five and to turn to page 53 in the book. And then you start a new action phase, basically, and uh, do that all over again and things like that. And then you're going through and doing those different actions, going through those different progressions. Um, so that's a little bit of what the game actually sounds like. Like I said, I don't want to spoil it, so I'm obviously not going to go through this and show you anymore. But that's kind of how the narration sounds and what you guys can expect. The narration is really good uh, in this game and really adds the what makes this game unique, basically. So... That is basically a little bit of an overview. That is basically a little bit of an overview of the game. There's also navigation tokens that are sitting here, which basically every time your ship moves, you're going to be placing down navigation tokens. And directed by the game, it may tell you sometimes to read the the number that's sitting on the navigation token. Could be a lightning storm, could be cloudy days. A lot of things, different things can happen. And you're moving your ship, trying to get closer and closer to the actual island spot, which is your first objective in the game. In the first scenario, at least. So you're basically going through this with your party and you're trying to reach the end of the scenario. So that's a good overview of what the game is actually like. Of course, like I said, this is just an overview. It's not a rules for rule reference. So there's a couple of things I'm leaving out, but that's a good overview of what the game would play like to make you guys think if you're interested in this or not. So I played this a few times already with my wife. So let's go ahead and get to the table now. And let me give you guys my actual opinion and review of what I think about Forgotten Waters. All right, guys. So that was Forgotten Waters from Plaid Hat Games. And... This game is freaking awesome. Um, I don't even know where to start because I, I'm just so happy with this game. This game came out of nowhere for me. Um, I had This game was not on my radar. I must have missed it when everyone was talking about it and stuff. I just heard Plat Hat Games. I got actually a Facebook ad. They were talking about it on Facebook and they were like, oh, Plat Hat Games is releasing Forgotten Waters. Go get it on their website, blah, blah, blah. I was like, huh, let me look into this because I like Plat Hat Games. You know, they made Dead of Winter and other games that I've been interested in. And then I looked closer. I was like, oh, shit, it's a Crosswords game. Uh and for those who don't know what that is, that's the same system they use in Dead of Winter, where if you something basically gives you a choice, uh, a, a little story part, and then it tells you and it gives you a choice. And I was like, oh, I definitely want to see the next game in line of this. Um, so I looked into it, and it was a pirate game, and I'm into a you know pirate adventure type of game, scenario based, app based, everything checked off my boxes. I was really interested. Immediately hopped on it, got the game. Me and my wife sat down and played it, and like I said in the overview of the rules. This is a three to seven player game, which is actually a really cool thing that you can play a game like this with up to seven people. But we played it as a two player game. There are there is a variant on how to play with two players. It actually works pretty well. So if you want to play this solo or with two players, there is a possibility, and it's actually a pretty good variant. There's not like you're not missing anything because you're playing with less players than the game is telling you to. The only small thing I guess you're missing is that if you're playing solo, you're making all the choices by yourself. So you're basically just playing it for the story because you're not going to have that that feeling of like. 
everyone being on a crew and you're all talking to each other and trying to make the best decision for the crew, but also keeping your goals in mind and things like that. So uh, you're missing that part of the experience, but if you play solo, but with two players, at least me and my wife are having conversations back and forth. Should we save him? Should we do this? Should we feed them? How should we feed them? Should we let them starve? You know, things like that, that are happening in, in the scenario that we're giving choices to us. So really cool. Got the game and I'm really, really happy with it. This is definitely one of my favorite games I've played in 2020 so far. Uh, five scenarios in the box. Each one is about three hours or so, give or take, depending on how fast you go. Um, so a lot of content in the game. They are replayable. Like I said, uh, in the overview, you're not hitting every single beat of story while you're playing. The beginning, middle, and end is obviously always going to be the same. The higher you're getting to each destination, the stories you're hearing, the um, things your crew is going to have to deal with is going to be different from game to game. Uh, just because of the fact of the variation of the die rolls and depending on which story beat you're writing and how your dies are being rolled, how your skills are being rolled. So I actually think you're getting a lot of content out of this based on that because each one is three hours and you can play at least at least twice for each one in my opinion. Um, so like I said, five scenarios. If they, they did already say that if this game does really, really well, they hope to create more scenarios for it. So hopefully the game sells well for them to be able to do that. But what's here in the box, I'm really happy with the play through the first couple of scenarios already. Even though you can play this game at lower player counts, I actually think it's really, really good and chaotic and much more fun with the higher player count i can't wait to get this to the table with like five six or seven people it also makes the game a little bit easier just because you're handling those different roles to different people as opposed to one person having three or four uh it's not hard to do i played it as a two-player game and i had four roles and she had three and i don't have any issues handling it even as our first time playing it through so it wasn't really an issue and i can't wait to play it with seven people just because of the interaction of making decisions with each other so i can't wait for that experience but um as far as the rules go, it's actually a really simple game to understand. Uh, the rule book is actually only like six pages or so, and the first three are like set up and stuff, so there's not much to the actual rules. Because the app guides you as you go, you just need to understand the few principles in the game that the rule book goes through, and then you can dive right into the game. Uh, the location book is really well done. I like the way that you do the action stuff, where you only have 40 seconds to make those decisions, and you're only basing it on the icons and stuff, and then you actually read the action afterwards. as a really cool concept. Um moving your ship around the board to get to the location you need to go to. And you may not know what you may face. You can run into rough waters. You can run into thunderstorms and you can lose members of your crew. All different sort of things can happen when you're out there adventuring and you're going through these scenarios and you don't know what's going to happen. It's always going to be different depending on which tiles of those navigation tokens you pull up. That could either be a cloudy day or a rainy day or a thunderstorm or whatever the case may be. You never know what you're going to get uh, based on those top flippings and stuff, which also adds some variability to the game too that I forgot to mention is that those navigation tokens, you're picking them out of a pile of 30 and they're random and you're placing them on the board as your ship travels and you're obviously not going to use all of them in the same in the same mission. So when you play that mission again, those navigations that you're taking are also going to be different from game to game. So um, the let's get to the highlight of this game, which is the actual um, voice acting. You guys heard a very small snippet of what I showed you there in the overview, but... The actual voice work on here is outstanding. The, probably the best I've seen in any app implementation before. And it's just so, so good. The way that the voice acting is done uh, is just outstanding. Uh, the way that they talk, uh, there's so much humor in the game. Me and my wife actually laughed out loud a few times when we were playing through the game, which is really cool. And the story itself is really, really good. The story is re really keeps you enthralled, really keeps you entertained throughout the whole thing. Trying to figure out what's going to happen next to your crew. It's just really, really, really good. Uh, with the way that they did this game and even better for those people who hate app games because they're nervous about losing app functionality because if ios updates the 13 and then the app doesn't update with it because the game's three years old or something well this web this is a website based app so theoretically it should last a lot longer because you're not worrying about app updates you're just going to the web and i was surprised on how good that web app web app actually worked because as soon as i heard web app i was like here we go it's going to depend on a lot of things and stuff it's not going to be as good but it actually works really, really well. You wouldn't even know it's a web app. Like, it works extremely well. I have no problems with it at all. Uh, you can install the app for off-life use even if you want to, um, but you won't be able to get the voiceover. You'll have to read the actual text yourself instead of hearing the voiceover work, which is definitely not how I recommend you play the game. But if you don't have internet connection and you want to play that game that way, absolutely could. And you could have people read in their pirate voice and stuff if you want. So that's a possibility. So, overall, the game is outstanding. Uh, a great... Crosswords game. If you guys are a fan of Zen and you love that system and you're a fan of pirate games, this game is obviously another one in that line. Really, really cool. Uh, a lot of depth went into this game and a lot of cool um, uh, voiceover work went into this game. And uh, one of the ones that you can actually play with the higher player count that actually succeeds at playing at those higher player counts 
and not a lot of games like this exist that you can play with six or seven people, which is really cool when you have that many people over, and it keeps everyone entertained, everyone enthralled, because you're all helping in the decisions being made and stuff like that. So, guys, this is one of my favorite games of 2020 so far for board games. Uh, Plat Hat hit it out of the park, as they usually do with most of their games. Really, really hope that the game sells really well so they can get even more uh, development funds to create even more scenarios for this one because I want this one in my collection. I want to be able to continue to play scenarios with this one. Outstanding game, outstanding production values, outstanding voiceover work, and uh, outstanding storytelling itself. Uh, just awesome. I can't wait to play this with more people and continue on the scenarios. If you guys have any questions about anything you guys have heard here today, as always, leave it down below. If not, thank you guys for watching. Till next time. In tech, game in tech, he is the game in tech, game in tech, he game in tech, eating bread, he is the game in tech, going for a break, he is the game in tech, game in tech, he is the game in tech, game in tech.